Welcome to Know It All, a place to connect with researchers to answer all questions on health, science, technology, business, culture and more. This episode on why do I need a minimum viable product was created for you by Abigail. In this topic, Know It All will answer. What is a minimum viable product? Why do I need a minimum viable product? How does a minimum viable product save you money? How does a minimum viable product help your customers? What are the steps to deliver a successful minimum viable product? A minimum viable product, MVP, is the most basic version of a product that can be released and tested in the market. An MVP does not necessarily have to include all features but should still provide enough value for potential customers to use it effectively. This makes an MVP ideally suited for early-stage startups, as they are able to test their ideas with minimal resources and risk involved. Having an efficient way of testing new concepts before investing too much time or money into them is very important when launching any type of business venture. This is especially true if you are just starting out without financial backing from external sources such as investors or accelerators. Launching your first iteration quickly gives you valuable feedback on what works well within your concept and allows you to pivot more easily before spending lots of resources trying something else out which could prove to be inefficient down the line, potentially costing even more than creating a good base model would have been upfront. Releasing only essential functionalities at this stage also helps reduce development costs, both financially and time-wise, and ensures greater budget efficiency because you focus only on developing key components during this initial phase rather than going back and forth tweaking small details during later stages. It also allows companies to simultaneously focus on upscaling after getting consumer insights through actual user experience instead of relying solely upon speculations derived by internal research alone, which might not always correlate with users' expectations or needs. In addition, Having an MVP also enables entrepreneurs to get better visibility towards issues faced by consumers due to its ability to offer real-life data points right away, compared with data collected via interviews or surveys conducted pre-launch. Having this information can help you decide how best to implement any required changes so as to improve customer satisfaction whilst fine-tuning the final product until the exact desired outcome is achieved. Developing an MVP can be tricky but following certain steps will help ensure its successful delivery. 1. Define your goals. Before you start developing your MVP, determine what objectives this product should achieve. What value does it provide? Who are the intended users? How do those goals fit in with broader business plans for the future? Defining clear goals helps maintain focus on key components during development so that effort isn't wasted building something that won't ultimately yield desired results. 2. Prioritize requirements. After establishing initial targets for your MVP's design requirements and functionality needs, including user experience demands like system stability slash performance, developers must prioritize these elements accordingly based on importance level and estimated cost-effectiveness ratio. The goal here is simple, identify which core functions are most essential right away while leaving others aside. These additional functions can be added into later versions when more money has been generated from sales revenue streams derived through customer feedback rounds upon launch. This also allows room for growth over multiple iterations at once rather than waiting until one specific feature becomes fully operational first, then starting another process altogether, which could take much longer, especially when you have a constrained budget. 3. Validate your assumptions. Once all required tasks have been broken down into priority buckets by developers working closely together with stakeholders who have been involved throughout the process you should begin to validate your findings. Validate any assumptions made about target audience behaviors, market size projections, etc., using real data collected via surveys and interviews, as well as directly interviewing end users if possible. 4. Test early and often, don't wait till after the completion phase comes along to begin testing your product. Bugs might creep in without proper regression tests being conducted throughout development. Automation plays a huge role nowadays in helping save costs related to labor-intensive manual verifications processes, so use automated tools whenever feasible instead, such as Jenkins, Selenium, Cucumber, Protractor amongst many other popular frameworks today. 5. Release quickly. A good strategy would involve releasing small updates regularly consisting of incremental changes. This provides better visibility both internally as well as outside the organization on how progress is going towards delivering a final product versus a 1.0, 
and will eventually satisfy demands from existing clients plus entice new ones to join the bandwagon. Leverage the momentum you built in earlier stages with word-of-mouth advertising, marketing efforts, paid promotions, social media campaigns, organically grown content pieces, publications, events, symposium webinars, conferences, seminars held offline, and online medium channels alike. Doing so will help your MVP to successfully meet the expectations you envisioned from the outset. Thank you for listening. For more answers to questions on health, science, technology, business, culture and more, don't forget to subscribe to Know It All.